Hi guys, it's me Arden Lee. How's everyone doing? I am sitting here on my balcony with my lovely garden that I've just replanted. I'm gonna try and turn the camera to show you all. It's kind of shadowy. <laughs> it looks way better <laughs> over here. Um, hi. So uh, I wanna jump on here and I wanna talk about I can just straighten out here. That's a little better. Um, I want to talk about a couple of things that are coming up lately. There are, um, there have been a lot of conversations in the spirituality community lately um, that have been super problematic to people like myself <laughs> and um, other decent human beings who want to advocate for equality and uh, social justice since it is 2018 and uh, and that's what we're doing and we are moving forward toward the ascension of the planet um, before I keep going uh, first of all uh, let me know if you can hear me because I know that I'm outside and there's you know there's people like playing around in the pool behind me so um, uh, just tell me you can hear me if you can I am uh, watching for your comments. Throw me some emojis. Let me know you're, uh, you're tuned in. And before I get started, I'll just make a couple of quick announcements about uh, what's going on over in, uh, over in my world, uh, what kind of offerings I have for people if you uh, want to come join me, play, and participate. Uh, first of all, as some of you may already know, my online course, The Repatterning Project, which I'm super excited about and super proud of, is starting July 1st and the Facebook group for that project is currently up and running and we have our first several members who have joined in and uh, oh, loud and clear thank you appreciate you Sean so um, uh, what I'm starting to do throughout this month to gear up for July 1st when we begin the real work is I'm starting to post some articles and uh, you know short videos stuff that I've watched that I feel will get people into the right mindset for doing the work some of it is like those kind of like three minute inspirational videos that you find on Facebook some of it's gonna be a little deeper a little bit more about uh, the the technicalities of some of the, some of the subject material that we're uh, talking about sort of like the links between uh, trauma and depression um, etc etc um, and there's a bunch of really lovely awesome people who are over in the group already who um, you know are uh, my my goal with this month is just to start like getting the dialogue going like this isn't even part of the official course yet uh, but if you sign up now or as soon as you are able to sign up even if you can only put down a deposit for the full uh, you know amount that you want to pay for right now that's totally fine because I want to get people in there and talking I want to hear from you guys uh, even before we start the course about what kind of stuff is going to be most useful to you so uh, so hit me up send me a note uh, if you think that this is for you, if you want to join. The other thing that's happening this month is that I am playing a show with my band, Arden and the Wolves, at City Pub in San Diego on June 15th. That's a Friday. We're on at 9 p.m. and we're playing with uh, Christopher Sluka. So we're super stoked to, uh, to do that show. This is the first time we're going to be playing San Diego and it may be the only time we play San Diego all year since we are uh, predominantly in LA so I hope that uh, if you're in that area I know we got a lot of friends down there so I hope you'll come and check us out it's gonna be super fun and uh, and also if you feel like signing up for the repatterning project and you want to pay in cash you can come and meet me there and I will absolutely uh, accept payment from you uh, in that way if you prefer uh, I know for me for a long time I always love paying for things in cash because it's like it never even happened so <laughs> Wow, that's not a lot worse than I wanted it to. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm just going to go with it. So uh, without further ado, I want to get to the subject that is, uh, that is on hand right now. And the subject that I want to talk about is in the past month especially, and I feel like Danielle Laporte, I don't know if you guys know what happened with Danielle Laporte. Danielle Laporte, uh, I hadn't actually even heard of her until this whole debacle which is another reason that everyone should be really concerned with social justice because if the first time that someone is hearing about your spiritual brand is uh, because you're being called out for, um, for white nonsense about it, uh, that's not a good first impression to make. So 
Um, <laughs> Uh, but we're all very grateful for Danielle because she went first and she showed us what not to do and uh, And now we have a template for this discussion having uh, been opened more uh, Danielle Laporte uh, was launching a course called I want to say it was like lighten up uh, And there was some imagery in it that was really offensive to people of color um, I will admit that I looked over it and I might not have even seen it myself because I'm a Whitey McWhiterson and there's some stuff that's still in my shadow. I can't imagine I would have used that kind of in imagery. It doesn't really make sense to me. But um, once the people who were calling out what was wrong about the imagery she was using with like this very sexualized image of a black man and but the course is called Lighten Up and implying that lightness or whiteness is somehow better. Um, it was just uh, it was just a big misstep on her part and uh, and so that opened up a larger conversation about what it means to be a white person in the spiritual community who often likes to detach from things like the news or, uh, you know, what's going on in the world because they're in the spiritual community. So they're like detached from that. It's like, oh, I, I can't be bothered to read the newspaper. I'm too energetically sensitive for all of this. And like, I feel you like some days I feel like I'm too energy energetically sensitive for it too, but but here I am, so anyway, it's Sunday, I'm having a beer, don't judge me. So <laughs> um so what happened with that um is that a lot of stuff started also coming up in other places and it has been coming up I've called out a number of spiritual leaders who I have an advantage in the fact that I'm actually relatively new to the spiritual community I started um, I would say it was only like four years ago when I moved to LA and even like two or three years ago that I really started you know um, owning flowy pants and crop tops you know <laughs> so um, so I sort of have this outsider perspective on the one hand um, obviously, I'm a deeply spiritual person. On the other hand, um, I'm in a rock band. Uh, I'm goth. I'm, you know, I came out of the BDSM scene. Um, I left that behind me for the time being. But, um, you know, I don't feel that my spirituality needs green juice and yoga and, you know, Burning Man and whatever other trappings of the spiritual community that there are. I actually find it a little weird that there are, this is probably a subject for another talk, but I find it a little weird that there are trappings of the spiritual community because this subculture, the existence of this subculture implies that like the rest of the world is somehow not also spiritual. And that's not true. Um, there can be, I mean, I, I think, <laughs> uh, I think, you know, I try to prove that every day with my band. I'm in a rock band. Rock music is deeply grounding. It's deep, it's, it's, um, it has a high density to it with some of the uh, the volume and the typical kind of noise that it makes. It's not um, it's not Anugama, you know. It's not uh, it's not Adiemus. It's not uh, it's not Liquid Bloom. Although I love them and I listen to them all the time, um, but uh, it's different. But the thing is, it's just a different energy. It actually is just as spiritual when you think about it. Um, it's just, or I don't know if it's just as spiritual. It carries as much of an energetic signature as spiritual music does. So it's just a different flavor of the same thing. You know, it's like if I want to induce a state, I'll listen to a certain song. And there are certain songs that, um, you know, maybe some of the more like medicine songs will make me feel more tribal and groovy and at peace or whatever like I get into the drums you know and the the soft groove or whatever but rock music can give me um, some of the passion or the discernment I need rock music can help you draw a boundary it can help you say like fuck no uh, Michelle says different resonance yeah exactly um, so the fact that there is this spiritual community that thinks it's more spiritual than other people is like I'm I'm getting a little kind of over that and I love my friends in the spiritual community um, because they're my friends and because they're expressing themselves in a way that feels right to them um, And I love so many principles of the spiritual community But there is there is a certain shadow and there is a certain hubris that is going on with it that we're seeing come up right now And this is the main subject that I want to talk about so many people when you try to sort of Gently point out what they're doing to them. I know that I don't always come off as gentle But the thing is I always start giving people the benefit of the doubt. I'm always like what? What are you, 
you can't possibly mean this, right? No, this is this is horribly racist. Let me give you an out. <laughs> let me let me give you a way to, for this to not be the thing that you're actually saying right now. I'm a little shocked that this is the thing you're saying right now. Please say it ain't so, Joe. So that's that's how I go into those conversations. And inevitably, no, they double down and they say, no, that is what I mean, and you are blocking this conversation from happening. And I'm like, no, the conversation is happening right now. We're literally having a conversation about this at this moment. Um, my half of the conversation involves telling you that what you're saying is horrible and wrong, and you don't like that, but that's what's happening. So, um, so often what time was what happens when those people feel defensive, and granted, like, yeah, they're posting something that maybe they're kind of ignorant about, and then someone calls calls them out in front of all their friends list or their community or their Facebook group or whatever and their natural human impulse is to double down and say no that's not me I don't have a shadow I'm right I'm right and you're wrong and th the first thing that they jump to because this is an, a languaging that we have managed to weaponize now um, you know people are talking about weaponizing victimhood I'm not gonna say that that never happens um, I think that uh, I think that there are instances in which the attention that victimhood is rightfully getting right now because it needs to be brought to light, it needs to be stopped on a societal level, is something that is unfortunately up for grabs for co-opting by people who want um, what they see as, um, you know, the sympathy or the attention or whatever but I barely want to give that even like I barely even want to give that like one percent of what's going on right now because the truth is that there are things that are happening in this society that are unfair uh, that are based in systemic inequality systemic oppression and the way that that shows up in our institutional structures of our society so am I not going to say that with that victimhood is never been weaponized against someone no i'm not gonna say that but i'm not gonna focus there either because there are real issues and there are real problems the problem is what <laughs> that that tiny one percent or whatever that is happening um people who are doing the oppressing who are on the side of the oppressing whether it's personal that they're doing that themselves or they're just accustomed to the system being normal right there's a difference between I'm oppressing you because I'm racist and I hate you or whatever that's obviously a problem versus this is just the way the world is this is what I'm used to and I don't want it to change ultimately the impact is going to be similar however so while the intent may be different um, it's still a problem we may want to be gentler with the people who are just ignorant but the problem that I'm seeing is that when you inform them of what they're doing uh, they like to double down, as I said. They like to dig their heels in because they feel triggered, they feel attacked, and they're like, you're just weaponizing your victimhood against me. Um, okay, well, you're weaponing, weaponizing weaponization against me, so. And what they will do in this instance is they will say, you're playing the victim, you're in a victim consciousness, you haven't healed, and um, I'm glad that I triggered you so you can examine this in yourself. So this happened to me, this has happened to me a couple times now, by the way, as you probably know if you've been following all this. Um, it happened, it happened a, a couple weeks ago on the thread of someone that I had considered a friend. Um, it kind of, it kind of sucks how it all went down, um, but there was this post about victim consciousness and weaponized victimhood and, and I went there and I really tried to engage in a way that was uh, positive. I engaged with the original poster who was a friend of mine uh, in a way that was actually very productive and very mutually respectful. Uh, however, then there were some other people who jumped on that thread uh, who, uh, you know, um, just like bragging about the fact that they don't engage in politics. They think voting is stupid. Um, you know, they think that there is another person who's like, words can't hurt you no matter what I say. If you're hurt by it, that's on you, not on me. And I'm like, this is awful, you guys. Like, this is just terrible. Like, if you're saying this, you're, you're being a horrible human being. I'm not saying that you are a horrible human being, but you are being horrible right now. And you need to come back into alignment because you're not aware of the harm that you're doing. There are people on this thread who are saying, you are doing harm right now. 
and you're saying, no, I'm not capable of doing harm. If you feel hurt, that's on you. Well, it's a little spiritual bypassing right there. And it comes out of something that is, you know, has truth in it in the sense that, you know, we do choose to, we choose where we put our energy. And if we're engaging with someone who's constantly hurting us, like this is why we leave toxic relationships. This is why we say, you know, okay, I'm not gonna align with this person. I'm not in agreement with this. I'm gonna be a sovereign being and I'm gonna go where I'm loved. That's a really great idea to do with a person who is being problematic. The problem is when you're waking up every day and like 80% of the people in the populace are being problematic because they're born into a problematic society and they don't recognize that they're being problematic, then we need like the whole ship to turn around. We need like the entire yacht. You know, like we're turning around the Titanic before it hits the iceberg. And that's actually very real, you guys. There's, I'm not the main <laughs> spokesperson for this work. I mean, who would, who would absolutely claim to be? But this is not my area of expertise at this point in our linear time. <laughs> um, it's something I'm engaging with on a learning level. Um, I'm just putting that out there because I'm only starting to talk, to talk about this very lightly. But people like um, David Jonathan Rostowski uh, and uh, Bergiel, the, uh, the, the being from Sirius that he uh, received as a channel um, to, to bring forth more transmissions for the human race. And also uh, Daniel Schmachtenberger, who's a really smart lecturer. He has some really amazing um, essays and uh, talks on YouTube. I advise you looking those people up. And there are many other people who are really talking about the fact that this planet is in a time of ascension. And what that means is that our current systems have set up to, um, they're not sustainable. Something that Daniel posted just the other day um, was that there's two reasons that Earth and life and humanity as we know it is like possibly likely not to survive the next 500 years. One is that we are in game theory, we're in win-lose scenarios with each other rather than being in win-win, omni-considerate scenarios where everyone wins and we are adding to that exponential technology. And what he says is exponential tech is already out of the bag and we can't put it back so we have to switch from win-lose scenarios where we're competing with each other to win-win where we can support all of humanity together. And the other uh, reason he says that we're looking possibly at the uh, the end of the world in the next couple centuries. Uh, maybe I'm being dramatic about that. Maybe I'm not though. I'm not sure. Like I'm, like I said, I'm still, I'm still engaging with this work on an intellectual level so I can bring it forth. So that's why I'm making this disclaimer. But the other reason is that um, our systems that we have set up, and when I say systems, I mean, um, I mean economic systems. I mean um, environmental systems. I mean, you know, how we handle our waste, how we handle social security, how we handle. Um, you know, but many, uh, many of the systems that are present on Earth um, are running on, uh, you know, um, they're not self-sustaining, they're not self-repairing, um, they, they're not self-perpetuating. What happens instead is that we have accumulation and depletion. We have accumulation of giant trash dumps in the Pacific Ocean and we have depletion of our ozone layer, okay? We have accumulation of debt, we have depletion of resources. If you're a millennial, you know this harder than most. I do too. So, um, and one of the things that many millennials are doing at this point is to, um, you know, find ways of, of having new sources of income uh, rather than, you know, just being in that same corporate job for 25 years and at the end of your career, you know, you get a gold watch and you get a company party or whatever and then you retire and you play golf. It's not really working in our current society anymore for us. So now we are looking at uh, multiple sources of income. There's a lot more entrepreneurship going on. Everybody's a coach. <laughs> Everybody's a coach, <laughs> which is which is wonderful and also sometimes kind of um, frustrating too. I'm a coach. I can't even talk. <laughs> but um, uh, you know, um, it's wonderful because we are all giving people the opportunities to add value in a way that is in alignment with their sovereignty. It's frustrating because we have not yet worked out how. We're still, we're still in our like taking baby steps of working out how that system works. So there's a whole lot of marketing language and like oversaturation of Facebook ads and everything. And it's like, ah, it's just like, it's, it's too much. Sometimes I like, I sign on to Facebook and I don't even want to work on my business anymore because I've just scrolled by like five sponsored posts for how I can get more clients. And I'm just like, 
I'm like, stop, you guys. Ah, I can't. I can't. I just want to resonate with what's authentic to me. I just want to. I just want to see the people I want in my feed, and that's why I want you guys to work with me too. That's why I try to come on and like be as real with you as possible. Because I want. I want. Like, I just think that's the best way to. I don't know. If you want to work with me, like, you should probably get to know me first to make sure that I'm a good coach for you. So here I am. <laughs> here I am, and here's what I think about the world. So um, all of that is happening. Uh, due to these two factors, as I said, uh, game theory plus exponential tech, as Daniel Schmachtenberger wrote, wrote about recently. Um, also, uh, um, uh, the accumulation and depletion of our current systems not being self-sustaining. So there's, uh, there's all those things. So when I go on to these threads and I call out people's behavior because they're being casually racist um, or casually sexist or they're upholding an old paradigm way of being that is no longer in alignment with the new earth paradigm we're creating. It's because I'm trying to save the fucking planet, you guys. I know I sound kind of crazy, um, but that level of craziness is actually the times that we're living in. You look at what's happening around us and you look at, you know, our presidency, you look at all, like all that, like that's, it's just, you know, this is like humanity is at a make or break point. So here we are. So when I go in, and I call out someone and I say, you can't possibly be willfully contributing the, to the demise of planet Earth with your beliefs. And they come back and they say, I'm glad that I triggered you. No, bitch, I am not triggered. You're just wrong. <laughs> um, I say bitch because I'm goth and I've lived in New York for 13 years. Um, I feel like a lot of times people mistake some of my languaging for being triggered because um, I'm used to talking in a way that is very straightforward and very New York. It feels authentic to me. Um, I also grew up on slam poetry. Um, I, was in, I was in the slam poetry community throughout all of college in New York. So, um, so when we start talking about racial issues, um, I start using some language. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, because that is, uh, that is also a part of my history that I embrace. I am not afraid to channel my inner angry slam poet. She is still, she is still alive and thriving within me. And people jump to this space of like, you're being triggered, you're playing the victim. Um, no, uh, you're just wrong and I'm angry about that. And one of the things my friend Damien, my friend Damien Burke, who, uh, who is uh, awesome, he's on my Facebook friends list, a uh, super smart guy. Um, he, he compared this, and when I said this, he's like, this is great, Arden, thanks for, um, thanks for giving me this metaphor to use, like, I'm not trigger, I'm not playing the victim, I'm warning you to stop beating me with a stick while you're doing it. If you're harming me right now and you don't know it, then I'm telling you that, and I'm, and I'm, I'm telling you to stop beating me with the stick, I'm not complaining about in the past when I was beaten with a stick by somebody else and there's such a fine line right now between um, abuse and enabling the beliefs that allow abuse to continue and I don't think we are I don't think we benefit from separating those things as much as we think we do as much as we don't want to conflate, um, you know, a police officer beating a person of color to death with someone making a casually racist statement on Facebook. Yes, of course, there is a scale to these things. Those two things are not the same thing. And yet, um, they are part of a system that needs to be dismantled. They're both coming from the same sort of root cause of white privilege and colonialism and having founded a country on genocide and slavery. And that's hard because if you're a Whitey McWhiterson like me, you grew up um, fairly privileged and went to school where they taught you all these history classes to be proud of America. And now you're, now you're facing the reality. Now you're facing uh, the shadow, all the things that you did not want to confront. And man, like, it's ugly. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like that I don't get to live in my, like, happy fantasy world anymore. But, um, but I've seen what living too long in that happy fantasy world um, that's not real can actually do and all the harm that it's continuing to perpetuate.
So don't let people tell you you're being a victim when what you're trying to do is turn around the systems we have set up in society that are contributing to what will ultimately be the demise of the human race if it keeps going in this direction. I've been thinking a lot about fractals lately. It seems like it was a weird segue, but I've been thinking a lot about the Fibonacci spiral. I've been thinking a lot about how things unfold and spill out and infect. Grant Morrison talks a lot about this sort of being like a virus, like how do we infect other people with our ways of being. And there's a lot of talk also about way showers, the ascension, those people on the ascension wave who are going first and doing the work so that other people can catch on. And um, and I see this as, be, as being a wave. It, it, it appears to me as a wave, but it appears to me as a wave that's like, not so much a wave that's going up vertically, but a wave that's going out like this and spiraling outwards and starting to infect all the rest of society, infect in a good way, infect with um, our ideas, because ultimately we want the planet to survive. There is, um, there is a theory that I've heard recently, and again, this is something I am just engaging with on a learning level. I'm, I'm not really ready to teach this yet, but I'm also so consumed by it that I can't well, here I am and I want to talk about it. So it's kind of like, I feel like I also can't just ignore it and I can't pretend that this is not influencing my work. There is a theory that I've talked about the Mayan calendar ending in 2012 and people thought it was going to be the end of the world and it wasn't. But there's a theory that what it is, is that this is not the first time that intelligent life has existed on earth. This is not, our human race is not the first, whether, whether they were something you would consider human or whether they were something that we are not familiar with, the theory is that there has been intelligent life on this planet at least seven or eight times since this planet has existed. And it always reaches a point where it dies off. And the end of the Mayan calendar in 2012 was this is the point where normally humanity starts to die off. And then we restart the cycle again. Is it the end of the world like the end of the world is going to blow up? No. It's maybe the end of the world like we are actually destroying the world because we create these unsustainable systems of accumulation and depletion and then we just burn ourselves the fuck out. And when I think about that and I think about the things that other people are bringing through, and that theory, by the way, was relayed to me by, uh, by my reader, uh, Kara Kimbria. She's like almost never on Facebook, which is a shame because she's super rad. She reads at The Green Man. Uh, she was telling me about this theory and you know then I go and I, I go over to David Jonathan Rostovsky's Patreon and I purchase his uh, book The Ascension Manual for Planet Earth it's only a dollar on his Patreon I'm only like four or five chapters in and I'm riveted it's amazing if you want to learn more about this the language is super clear it's super smart just like go check him out and then I stumble on Daniel Schmachtenberger's lectures and I watch his videos and I'm like these people are all saying the same thing and when I see a whole bunch of the same message in one place, in rather, the same message in different places at relatively concurrent periods of time, then that's kind of like, that's my cue to pay attention. So I didn't really mean to talk as much about saving the planet as I did mean to talk about not allowing people to, um, to say, to use the words triggered or victim consciousness uh, in a manner that silences you. Because really what they're doing is they just don't want to look at their shadow. So by saying you're playing the victim, you're still in your past hurts. I literally had someone who doesn't even fucking know me tell me that I shouldn't be a coach because I'm clearly still haven't dealt with my issues. Which is ridiculous because it's like, no, you just don't like what the healed version of me looks like. Because the unhealed version would have been like, sorry white man. Let me bow down in front of you and suck your dick. I'm not gonna lie, like I was, you know, I was a patriarchy princess. Uh, I was just trying to survive in a system that was oppressing me um, by being as desirable as possible. I joke that the patriarchy is a prison and I was trying to be inmate of the month. Um, and that's true. 
can look at a lot of that in a lot of my my former work um, tangentially I've decided not to be ashamed about that because I think the things that I created are still useful as tools and tactics but I was so heavily in them and committed to them that I didn't have a sense of self outside of how I might use those tactics to survive that's not healthy so don't do that <laughs> read my book and use it for when it's fun you know play in the matrix all you want go seduce your favorite rock stars trust me it's a great time but um, <laughs> uh, don't mistake it for um, the correct way of being in the world. Uh, so, um, so they don't like what the healed version of me looks like. Because when I'm healed, I actually do speak up about things that bother me. And a lot of straight white dudes, yes, I said it, straight white dudes, are you triggered right now? Straight white dudes, straight white dudes, straight white dudes, humperdink, humperdink, humperdink. <laughs> Straight white dudes uh, do not like being called out. There's actually a lot of, and there's also like a lot of white women in the spiritual community who also don't like being called out. So it's not only straight white dudes. I'm sure there's probably some, uh, some other folks too, but predominantly they're the people who privilege benefits. So they don't want to be called out. They don't want to dismantle the patriarchy because they're having a grand old time being a white dude going around appropriating everyone's spiritual cultures and, um, you know, uh, having a bunch of casual sex with, uh, uh, needy patri patriarchy poly princesses <laughs> it's just shadow y'all it's just like it's just like the way that the system is is working so they don't want to be called out like that so they're like you're in your trauma you're a victim and I'm like bro if you'd been following my work for the past few years you'd know that I actually healed and dismantled all my trauma so um, me speaking up about the perpetuation of this kind of trauma is the thing that you don't want to deal with. So you're weaponizing this word of victim consciousness against me because you are trying to silence me because secretly you don't want to deal with your shadow because secretly you don't want to dismantle the patriarchy, the white supremacist hetero patriarchy. Um, you know, this is so intersectional, obviously, you guys. This is, this is so intersectional, um, but it is. You know, obviously there's racial issues, there's gender issues, there is, uh, there are uh, trans LGBT issues. Um, you know, there's marriage equality, there's like, there, it's just like all across the board and all of them are like, you know, these like hashes of where it like, you know, so if you're like, you know, if you are, if you are straight, white, cisgendered male, um, like you scored all, like you checked all of the privilege boxes, basically. That doesn't mean you're a bad person. It just means that you don't face the challenges that other people face. And it means if you want to be a good person in 2018, in my opinion, that you have a duty to help other people because uh, when your cup is full, you know, then you want to pull people up. That's also why it's a generous thing to heal your own trauma because I actually didn't have the bandwidth to engage in uh, racial equality issues and trans equality issues when I was dealing with my own trauma and my own issues. That doesn't mean that I wasn't for them and I didn't believe in them, but I, I didn't have the bandwidth to be as staunch of an advocate as I am today because I was dealing with all my own shit and I was trying to heal myself. So I actually like, like, and that's like, that's actually, it's a healthy thing to do. Um, you put your mask on first before you put someone else's on, the small child next to you on the airplane. Um, so, uh, but <laughs> put your mask on, <laughs> put your mask on so you can help other people put their mask on. Um, so if you're doing this work like I am, and you are going on to some uh, white male nonsense or some, uh, you know, straight cisgender nonsense or white spiritual nonsense or white feminist nonsense or whatever. And you're calling that out and saying what it is and trying to inform people of where they are doing harm because their belief systems are contributing to the end of the human race as we know it. <laughs> I know that might feel like a stretch and I'm not going to say it's not a stretch. But there are links, you guys. There are absolutely links. So, um, so it's not <laughs> it's not as far of a stretch as it sounds like. Um, we can unpack all those links at another time, uh, or y'all, you can just read the Ascension Manual for Planet Earth by David Rutsowski. Um, it's super good. I want everyone to read it so we can all have these conversations. I don't want to have to be the one catching everyone up all the time. No, I love you guys. This is not about you. I just I'm very frustrated about going on to other places and seeing people who have not done the work. And I'm like, ah, and maybe I do take on too much responsibility for myself. You know, maybe I do, um, you know, whatever. Uh, but 
Uh, this morning, you know, um, I just made a post, and this is partly why I'm doing this video now. Um, I just made a post about it. I went on to a new Twin Flame group because I think that Twin Flames um, are part of healing relationship, healing sacred union. Twin Flames are uh, are absolutely here to help heal gender issues between the masculine and feminine polarities. Um, but because they're here to handle balancing the masculine and feminine, there's some turfy people out there. By turfy, I mean trans exclusionary radical feminists who feel that uh, transgender people are, you know, somehow invalid. I don't know, there was this thread about, ugh, it was just nonsense, you guys. It was so ridiculous, I don't even know where to start. Well, I do, but it's, there was someone who said that, um, that the Illuminati had a transgender agenda of using big pharma to assign genders to babies and put them on hormones that they're not ready for so that there can be more transgender people in the world and and um, and this is attacking sacred relationship and the balance of masculine and feminine. And I was just like, there's, there's so much wrong with this. I don't even know where to begin. Um, that's also not what twin flames are about at all, um, which sucks. And I'm so not ready um, to talk about, uh, I'm so not ready to talk about that, but the more, the more I'm feeling more and more ready all the time uh, because it's something that's necessary and it's work that needs to get done. So uh, at some point, but for now, uh, yeah, I went on there and I was like, what? <laughs> I did my normal like, what in the, what in the Sam Hill have I just landed on here? What is going on with this? What, what, what planet are we on? Um, and, uh, and the person who wrote this, you know, the admin of the group was like, um, I'm glad that I triggered you. I invite you to look at this in yourself and see what it says about your own issues with your femininity or whatever it was she said. And I was like, bah! my brain explodes. Um, anyway, I can't, I can lead a horse to water, but I can't make them drink. So I can't, um, I can't change, I can't change everyone from being problematic. I can only try to, and I tried to tell her, I was like, I was like, dude, I'm just giving you a warning. <laughs> like, don't end up like Danielle Laporte. Like I think of da like I hadn't even heard of Danielle Laporte before all of her her uh, problematic bullshit went down, and there was a whole giant war about it. Now, whenever I think of Danielle Laporte, I'm not gonna hire her as a coach because I'm gonna think, oh, that's the racist white lady. So again, I talked about this in one of the last videos about uh, fake authenticity and having your shadow pop up, right? You want to call these things authentic, but you're really just not dealing with the harm that is being caused in front of you whether it's you doing it or whether it's whether it's someone else and you're just kind of ignoring it it's um it's present and it's happening and uh and these are the things to listen to and and maybe like maybe go back and spend some more time in like meditation or classes or something if you really think that uh i mean that thing about balancing your masculine it's like you know being more feminine or whatever I'll just put this out there, like the whole point of the twin flame path for any of you who know what that is or engage with that concept at all is about balancing your inner masculine and feminine um, so that you can attract your twin because if you're too much in your masculine or too much in your feminine, which doesn't even have to do with your gender. I'm actually much more of a masculine polarity myself, um, even though I identify as a cisgendered woman. Um, if you have too much of one energy or the other, then you won't be able to attract sacred union because you have to have inner union in order to attract outer union. Because also you need to, because like attracts like, not only do you have to have inner union to attract outer union, but you also have to embody, you and your twin have to embody the qualities in each other that mirror each other, or at least understand them. Um, if you have an understanding of the things that you lack, of where your strengths are and where your weaknesses are, um, that's almost like having the strength itself because if I understand that I don't know how to code a web page, if I think that I know how to code a web page but I don't, I'm gonna sit around and being like, I have to code my web page someday, I have to get that sales page up and I'm never gonna do it. But if I know that I don't know how to code a web page, then I can actually go and hire a web designer and I can say, hey, I don't know how to do this, so I'm gonna outsource it, can you do this for me? Which in a way is almost like you know, it's sort of like almost as, almost as good. If you understand 
because you're being mirrored, if you understand where your weaknesses are and you cultivate at least an awareness of them and knowing what you don't know, then you're moving from unconscious incompetence to conscious incompetence and then you can start to actually get help to do those things. Maybe not like help, maybe you don't even, you know, I'm not talking about like getting professional help, I'm just talking about like outsourcing uh, the things that you don't know how to do so that they're within your conscious understanding. Who knows, maybe true actualization is being able to do everything, but uh, that sounds exhausting, so uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think that's what we're meant to do. <laughs> uh, because we have an ego that defines what we are and, and what we're not. Um, and we are here meant to lean into, uh, meant to lean into uh, our special gifts, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and not try to do everything ourselves. So, yeah. Um, but that awareness is what is going to attract that union. So, um, it was just ridiculous. So no, I'm not triggered by your stupid bullshit. It's, this is not on my trigger. This is on you. If you're the one being problematic, this is actually, I'm not triggered, you're just wrong. I'm not triggered, you're just wrong. That's it. So don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Feel free to use any of my rhetoric in your social justice online arguments. It's Sunday. Have a beer. And please contribute in your own small way, in your own significant way, whatever that may be. Please let's contribute to the survival of the human race as we know it, rather than continuing down the path of these unsustainable systems that promote harm, oppression, inequality, greed, injustice, pollution, economic collapse, and ultimately everything that ensures <laughs> that we will not be living on this planet in 500 years. That really is, um, really is the juncture we're at right now. Catherine says, I'm not triggered, you're just wrong. It's my new favorite phrase. Yes! Jessie says she's trying her best to contribute. I believe you, Jessie, and I believe in you. Um, I really appreciate everyone who follows this work. It really is important. Um, that's what we're here to do. So, um, anyway, this video has already gotten super long and I got into a whole bunch of topics that I didn't anticipate getting into, but I do think they were important. I think do think they, they, uh, <laughs> Uh, they're necessary to understand for moving forward on this point and on, and on others. Um, also, definitely check out David Jonathan Rostowski, H-R-O-S-T-O-S-K-I. Look on his Patreon if you can get his book for a dollar. It's only a dollar. It's super good. It's so worth it. Um, Daniel Schmachtenberger, um, just look up his YouTube, Schmachtenberger, S-C-H-M-A. C H T E N B E R G E R. Wow, I did that all in one fell swoop. Um, a lot of really important material being circulated, and I would rather just send you to them because they can explain it better than I can at this point. Um, but I'm also working on that too. Uh, at this point, I just want to engage in the conversation with more people. So, uh, yeah, I want more people on board so we can talk about those bigger issues in the future. So, thank you guys for watching. Appreciate all of you, and um, let's save the planet.